Hey guys, today marks the release of my narrative quest and dialogue editor for Unreal Engine. It's available in the marketplace, so today I'm going to do a quick start guide showing you how to make a totally original quest where we have to help a chef make a cake for the king. In just three minutes, we'll add your first quest to the game with narrative, and then in four minutes, we'll create our first dialogue, and then the rest of the video is going to be spent tying those two together and making it nice and clean. If you want to follow along, the link to buy narrative is in the description. Once you've bought it, you'll be able to click open and launcher. Then click install the engine and install the plugin to your engine. So today we're going to make a third person project. Click on next and then just make a blueprint one. And that's really all you need to do to follow along. In your project, make sure to click view options and then show plugin content because we're going to use some of the plugin content out of narrative. All right, I'm here inside of my third person project. I'm gonna to go to edit plugins and search for narrative and just make sure it's enabled. So we're gonna make our very first quest in narrative. So let's go here to make a folder called narrative and quests are made up of tasks. So I'm gonna make my first task and just call it find item. Okay, now we'll right click and make our first quest. So we're gonna to go to narrative quest and we're gonna call it chef's assistant. And the event graph works like any blueprint you've ever used before. You can do all sorts of blueprint scripting. You could give the player a reward on quest succeeded or send the player a message on quest started, whatever you wanted to do, right? But the quest graph is where you design your quest. So let's design our quest here. We're gonna drag out and any tasks you've made will appear here. And there's two that come with narrative, select dialogue, reply and custom. Uh, but we won't worry about those at the moment. We're just gonna use find item. So we're going to say find item, um, for the description we'll say find some ingredients. And we're going to say find item milk. And then we're going to add multiple tasks because the player also has to find flour and an egg. So we're going to go to find item, egg, and we're going to say find an egg. This one's going to be find some milk. And this last one, find item flour and it's going to be find some flour okay and then you could add more things for the player to do in the quest but i'm actually just going to end the quest so i'm going to delete that and just drag out and click on succeed the quest and when you get to a succeed the quest the quest is succeeded you can also fail quest as well if you want so what we're going to do is compile and save that and how do we start our quest that we just made let me show you we're going to open up the third person character we're going to add a narrative component and then under functions just click on override and then begin play and all you need to do is drag up from narrative and type begin quest and then just select the quest we made and that will start the quest but you won't actually see anything happen because there's no ui on the screen so we're going to put the ui on the screen that comes with narrative super easy to do you just type create widget narrative default ui and then add it to the screen by tapping add to viewport and that's it so now you'll actually see things happen the other thing we need to do is hook up narrative to the ui you can use two different components one for quest and one for dialogue but you really don't need to so we're going to hook narrative up to both of those and then hit compile and save and so when we hit play you can see it starts the quest which is pretty cool but there's no way to finish the quest because there's no pickups so let's make some little pickups that the player can take so we're going to make a actor we're going to call it pickup and all the pickup is going to be is just a sphere collision a static mesh and for the static mesh we'll just make it a cube and we'll make it nice and small and what we're going to do is go into the event graph and on actor begin overlap just get the narrative component from the thing that overlapped us so when the player walks into the pickup it's going to get the narrative component from the player and then we just need to do is valid and then complete narrative task and this is really cool this is a custom node when you click on find item it's asking what is the name of the item that the player just found we want to make this uh, a variable so that we can change it per item so I'm just going to click this little eye here as well. And then once you take the pickup, we're going to destroy it. 
And now what you can do is you can chuck some of these pickups into the level. And you can give them names. I'm going to call this one Milk. I'm going to call this one Egg. And I'm going to call this one Flower. And now when I hit play, we can actually complete the quest. And check it out. Quest succeeded, my new quest. And now we're going to make our first dialogue. To do that, we're going to go back into our narrative folder and right click and now make a dialogue. We're going to call it Chef. This is the dialogue for the chef. So we'll open that up. We'll just get rid of the default text. We're just going to say, can you please find me an egg, flour, and some milk? You could add some dialogue audio if you had it, uh, but we're going to add two options. We're going to say, sure thing. Or, sorry, can't right now. And the other thing is, how do we get the quest to start when you select this dialog reply? Well, all you have to do is add an event to it. So we're going to add an event, begin quest, chef's assistant. And now when you select this dialog option, it's actually going to begin the quest using the dialog. So all we can do is open our character up and just remove that begin quest. We don't need that anymore. Now that we've made our dialogue, we're going to make a chef character that we can walk up to and start the dialogue. So we're going to right click on our character, duplicate him, and we're going to call him BP Chef Character. Open that up, remove the narrative component, remove all of the code. All we need is just a sphere collision. We're going to make it 200 big, and when the player walks into the sphere, we're going to start a dialogue. So go to on component begin overlap get narrative component from target is valid and now what you want to do is just begin dialogue it is that simple and now we'll select the chef's dialogue we're going to give him the name chef and hit compile and save and then drag the chef into the level and now we'll be able to talk to him and check this out now that i've used the begin quest event that comes with narrative i can talk to the chef and I can hit sure thing and it will automatically begin the quest for me. And I can do the quest. Really cool. But the last thing we need to do is bring the items back to the chef. So how do we make our quest support that? The first thing we're going to do is modify the chef's dialogue. Whenever we talk to the chef, even if we've already started the quest, he's just going to say this every time. So that's not good enough. What we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect these. And we're going to have the root node be empty, but drag out and add an NPC response. Can you can you please find the items? All right. Then we're going to add another one. And it's going to be, have you got the items yet? But we don't want to say both of these options. We want to choose one of these options. So add a condition. And there are a bunch that come with narrative. You can make your own if you want as well. Is quest started or finished? Chef's assistant, not. And you can see it actually says on the node, is quest not started or finished? So this will only come up if the quest chef's assistant is not started or finished. And here we only want to show this one if the quest is in progress. Chef's assistant. And then lastly, I will do one last one. I'll say, thanks again for your help. And I'm only going to show that if you've actually completed the quest. So we're going to go to conditions. Is quest succeeded? Chef's assistant. Okay, so have you got the items yet? We're going to be able to say, yes, I have them here. Or no, I don't have them. Okay, so we've modified our dialogue. Now we need to change our quest logic. Remember, our quest just tells you to find the items, but now we have to change our quest to say that you have to bring them back to the NPC. Okay, so we're going to disconnect this, and then we're going to add another step to the quest. And when you drag out, you can actually see here, there's a select dialogue reply. It actually comes with narrative. So we're going to use that. That's perfect for what we want to do here. I'll show you this. So we'll delete this and just hook this up to the end. And where it says, yes, I have them here, I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to call this give items to chef. And we'll copy that. And then where it says reply ID here, I'm just going to say give items to chef. And then for the description, I'll just say give the items to the chef. Okay. 
So now we have to find the items, but then we actually have to select the give items to chef dialogue reply and then it completes the quest. So now we're ready to do the quest. Let's jump in, hit play. We're going to accept the quest. We're going to find the items, but now it's actually given us another step. Bring them back to the chef. So we're going to do that. He's saying, have you got the items yet? And we can either say, yes, I have them or no, I don't have them. Yes, I have them. Now, one last problem we'll fix really quickly is that you will be able to say, yes, I have them, even if you don't have them. So to fix that, we're going to go into our quest graph. We're going to click on this middle state here, and I'm just going to call it got items. We'll go back to our dialogue, add a condition, is quest at state. And we're only going to show this option if the quest is at state got items. Right? Only if, you, uh, only if the player is at this state in the quest will it show this option. So now if you don't have the items, you won't be able to actually select this option. Let me show you. If I only have like one of the items and I come back, you can see, no, I don't have them. So we actually have to get all of the items before that option becomes available. The last thing I'm going to do is give the player a custom skin as a reward for completing the quest. So we're going to go to the male body, I'm going to right click on it and create an instance, and I'm going to make it blue. So we'll click this, and then make this blue. And now all we have to do to give the player a reward is in our quest, go to the event graph and on quest succeeded, we're going to get the owning narrative component, get the owning pawn from that. Cast it to our third person character and then type set material mesh. And then select our blue material we just made and then hook it up. And now when you complete the quest, the player will have a blue skin. And if you come back to him after you've completed the quest, again, he'll use that custom dialogue. Thanks again for your help. Narrative is also fully networked, so if you hit play as client, you can totally play this in a networked game and it works exactly the same as a single player game. You do not have to do anything to get narrative to work with networking, it works out of the box in a multiplayer game. And you can even do shared quests where you play quests with your friends. Alright, so I'm going to show you the saving and loading, so what I'm going to do is take the milk. And now what I'm going to do is close the game, and inside of my character, all I'm going to do is on begin play, I'm just going to type load and I'm going to call the load function. By default, if you click on narrative, it automatically saves your progress on end play. You can also save by just searching for save and call save whenever you like. But if we call load, it will automatically load our quest back in. So remember how I found the milk? Check this out. I'm back in the game now. And you can see it remembers that I found the milk. It remembers that I've started this quest and it will do that for all of our quests. So really cool stuff there. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to make shared quests with narrative where you and a friend can work on the same quest together. But for now, this has been the intro to narrative. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.